Hello, I'm Professor Jeff Yarger, and I'm going to give you a quick example of using Gaussian 09 um, to look at heats of combustion or heats of formation um, uh, and being able to calculate these computationally. So, um, so this example is going to be for methane, and uh, this draws on, if you go to gaussian.com uh, and you go to their white paper, their technical support, their white paper section, they have a thermochemistry um, using Gaussian. And so if we look at this, um, there's a very nice written white paper on um, how to do basic uh, Gaussian calculations, what the thermodynamic quantities are, um, uh, what the output in Gaussian provides, and then they give um, a nice worked out example um, for this reaction right here, for this radical reaction reacting with hydrogen to form ethane and, uh, and a hydrogen atom. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is keep things similar to this white paper in a similar format that I've uh, done here in Excel, and I've basically made a table uh, very similar to what uh, they have to look at the the heat of combustion of methane, and at the same time, just looking at the heat of formation of water is kind of a standard test to do uh, to see, to make sure, you know, our calculations are working out right, etc. Uh, so, um, so basically, I was able to get into Gaussian and look and calculate each of these quantities. And so let's look at just one of them. Uh, and since we're going to talk about the heat of combustion of methane, uh, let's look quickly at how we would do some thermochemistry calculations on methane. So if we go to Gauss View, which is our graphical user interface for Gaussian 09, and this is Gauss View 5 on a Mac computer, um, I can quickly uh, draw out carbon atom um, in a tetrahedral geometry, so basically methane right here, rotate it, uh, translate it, um, etc. Okay, so I have my methane drawn. Now I want to be able to do, you know, thermochemistry calculations on this. So we're going to go up and set up a calculation, and it needs to be in an energy minimum structure. And so I can do that separately, but the nice thing is, is I can both do uh, an optimization and a frequency calculation all in one. The optimization is to optimize the molecular structure into a minimum structure, or its lowest energy ground state structure. The frequency calculations, because it's the vibrations of an isolated molecule that accounts for most of the thermochemistry, the vibrations, and to a lesser degree, the translation and rotation, it's the frequency-based calculation that gives you the thermochemistry uh, values in the energy, etc. So, so this gives us, in a sense, both. It first optimizes, and then it's going to give us the thermochemistry values through doing the frequency calculation. So this is about how it's going to optimize. Now, method-wise, um, we're going to do this at a, at a, you have to do it at decently high level of theory with a fairly large basis set to get values um, that even approach experimental uh, values, etc. So you have to do it at a fairly high level. You can try some lower levels yourself, but uh, I would say, you know, we're going to start this at a density functional theory level. Um, default spin, you know, with <clears throat> a functional that's that's pretty common, uh, B3 uh, LYP, but we're going to use a fairly large basis, Gaussian basis set. So, um, so in fact, we're going to include basically as large of a basis set in the 6311G uh, that we can get, and it is a singlet with no charge. And so if I submit that to run it, and I'm going to save it onto my desktop, I'll just call it test underscore um, methane uh, to test it, and it'll run. It'll create that over here. Uh, we can see that it makes a check file, a log file, the com file is the input, the log file is the output, and a check is what it's going along the way to run. Uh, we can pull up an activity monitor <coughs> and watch that running right here. So I'm also running a second job as well, uh, but that's uh, the thing basically running. 
Uh, and then when it's done running, it will. if you still have Gauss View open, you can close Gauss View and it'll continue to run whether Gauss View is open or not. And you can open Gauss View and open the log file anytime. But if you have Gauss View open, it'll stay there. The check file is if is something uh, crashed in between, we'll open the log file. There's the log file and then we can go to results. We can see a summary of our results. And quickly you'll see that uh, the energy uh, is singlet state, it tells you what level of theory, etc. And the energy that it calculates here is the energy I put into the table um, right here. So that gives me the energy in atomic units at that level of theory uh, for the system. And I can do that for all of these. For I can do it for water, CO2, oxygen, hydrogen, all of the things I have here. And I filled in all the numbers for this level of theory, for um, basically density functional using that functional in this basis set uh, for optimization. So now what about these other numbers here which is the correction for energy, enthalpy, Gibbs free energy, etc. and then how those are added together to, to get the overall energy corrected for the enthalpy, etc. which is what we need uh, for thermodynamic calculations. Well, um, so in that, you can't see that directly in Gauss View in its graphical user interface. So, so I'm even going to just, you know, close this at the moment. And, uh, that's all I really need to show you in Gaussian or Gauss View. You can set up all of those calculations independently, and you can go to higher levels of theory. You can see that that one right there already took 30, 40 seconds to run. When you go to some of these higher um, levels of theory, etc., it can it can take a lot longer. Okay. Now, so we can look directly at the log file. I'm just going to open it in a text editor. <coughs> so we were asking how long it it uh, took to run that. I'm just making this a little bigger so you guys can see it. So uh, this took 30 seconds to run. Um, and now the in, near the end of all the log file, it'll have the thermochemistry right here. So this is all the thermochemistry. And these... Um, numbers which correct the thermal energy enthalpy etc um, which I've which are listed right here are what I've included over here okay so you need to get into the log file and this is just this energy plus that gives that this energy plus that enthalpy gives the overall energy plus the correction term and that is what I'm going to use as my enthalpies um, for uh, a, a calculation. Okay, so now something to a caveat here to keep in mind is what is the reference state it's going to, it, which is a zero degree single atom reference state, which is not the reference state given in most experimental books, which is a standard state of the element in its, at its standard state conditions, etc. So you have to be very careful of what it's doing. Uh, but if you um, do a complete calculation on all the reactants and products, um, and all the reactants and products are in the gaseous state. This is something Gaussian can do, and then you can correct out. Okay, so that gives you how I use Gaussian, Gauss view, to calculate these terms right here. And I filled it in, and so I did these calculations for CO2. I did it for oxygen, and this is something, since we're talking about combustion reaction, we have to be very specific about. Oxygen gives people a lot of problems because the, the ground state, or the lowest energy state of oxygen, is a triplet state, not a singlet state. So I, there's actually three states that are common to it. Um, but these are the two lowest energy ones, and the lowest energy one is this triplet state. And it's what you're going to want to use um, uh, the triplet state to do your calculations. Okay, I've included this one singlet state just as an example. You can calculate explicitly the singlet or triplet states of this. And so let me maybe even just show you this really quickly, just so we're clear, uh, so I can go to oxygen atom. I can draw two oxygen atoms. I can link them together. I can make a double bond between them and move them at a certain distance apart from each other. So that's my starting point. And then I can start calculations. 
And again, I can do optimization of frequency calculations. I can do them at a level of density functional theory. Default spin, this is where you often want to go to unrestricted so that it doesn't restrict it. But and we'll go to the level basis that we've used before. But again, <coughs> the singlet is the most common ground state for most uh, small molecules but the triplet state is what's the lowest energy one for oxygen. You can calculate them both independently and see the difference, and I've done that here and provided those numbers. You want to use the lowest energy state to give you um, your thermochemistry calculation. So you can set that up and run that job, etc. I'm not going to uh, bother doing that here. These are also numbers you get out of the thermochemistry calculations. I've just included them here so we realize we're doing them all. It's very important that you do every single um, molecule that's included in the thermochemical reaction you're going to do at the same level of theory um, and with the same basis sets. And then I've taken those values um, and and so since I've already calculated oxygen, CO2, and then my hydrocarbon, um, and water. So these are what are typically going to be done for any um, combustion reaction. I've went ahead and included hydrogen, calculating for hydrogen over here, just so I can use the simplest combustion reaction or formation reaction, it's the same thing in this case, of water um, as kind of a standard test because the thermodynamics of, of water is so well known, its formation or its combustion reaction is so well known. So I can use that as a gauge for how well the level of theory, the basis sets I'm using, are giving me values compared to that of experiment. So I've done that here for water vapor using these values up here. And um, keeping in mind that the reaction I'm going to be calculating is from hydrogen gas to oxygen gas to forming uh, water in the vapor phase or gaseous state because that's what we're doing in Gaussian. We're not doing things where it has a mean field um, solvation around it or in the solid state where it's um, where it has other molecules around it. This is an isolated vacuum uh, molecule in the gaseous state. So this is the reaction I'm looking at. The nice thing is is that I can look up experimental values for that directly. Um, if I am worried about looking the formation reaction which is going to water at its standard temperature and pressure state which is the liquid, I can always take into account uh, the delta H of evaporation to make those corrections, um, etc. And then just for completeness because of how important it is I told you about the oxygen being in the triplet state versus um, a singlet state, I can think of doing those reactions separately and looking at what I get uh, for the enthalpies and seeing that you know I get one that in a sense um, comes closer to matching the experiment by doing it in the triplet state instead of the ground or instead of the um, singlet state uh, energy. But I you know I can explicitly in a sense do the thermochemistry in Gaussian on either one of those reactions separately. Then I just provide some experimental values here for what water is. So we can compare to water and we see that we're getting pretty close at this level of theory, which is not a very high level of theory. Um, I've done things for CCSD using full electrons and I get you get much closer. You get within one kilojoule per mole of what the experimental value is. But the time for these goes up drastically. So it goes from just a minute or so for each calculation, usually less than a minute, to 30 or 40 minutes. And, and this is for fairly small molecules. Um, like water and methane, so just three, you know, three, you know, to five atoms in size. When you start getting large, like, you know, benzene, naphthalenes, you know, larger rings, you know, 10, 20, 30 carbon units, this goes up exponentially in time, and, and you'll be waiting hours and hours to do things at, at this level of theory. Okay, so that just gives us a test where we can look at the combustion of hydrogen, or in other words, the formation of water, saying the same thing, uh, to look at this. And I use the same nomenclature um, that they do uh, in this Gaussian white paper. So now I can look at, 
you know, any standard hydrocarbon, which you can write a standard hydrocarbon uh, combustion reaction like this. And so this allows me to do it generally for any hydrocarbon. I've done it for uh, methane here. You can put any hydrocarbon you want in here and just recalculate this one column worth of values and be able to uh, plug it in here and, and be able to get accurate values. So compared to the experimental value, which is roughly minus 890 kilojoules per mole, um, uh, which is that for the combustion of methane with oxygen to form CO2 gas, which is its STP, and water, liquid water at STP. But again, we're doing the calculation from methane gas, oxygen gas, CO2 gas, which is all uh, standard state, but to water gas. And so we're going to have to make the correction for the delta H of evaporate, uh, vaporization of water. And stoichiometrically, there's two of them. And so if we compare this to what we get for our Gaussian calculation for this combustion-like reaction, right? It, every, it is a combustion reaction, except we're just looking at the products being all gases instead of one of the products being liquid. We can see that we get in the right ballpark. We should experimentally get about minus 800 kilojoules per mole, and we're getting about minus 760 kilojoules per mole. And again, this would improve if we improved our level of theory in our basis sets. Uh, but even this alone, again, takes you know several minutes, and it goes up very quickly. And again, I've just provided a few corrections so that when you're uh, when you're looking at standard state things like um, uh, things going into uh, the gaseous state, we can look at the evaporation. When we're looking at bigger molecules that are solid, we can look at their sublimation because we're going to be calculating in Gaussian something like naphthalene. We would be calculating in the um, gaseous state, not the solid state. Etc. So I hope this gives you a quick example that's able to help you get started with heats of combustion and heats of formation using Gaussian. Thank you.